War in Ukraine has caused significant damage to the country's natural environment. Many of Ukraine's major cities have been devastated. Forests have been destroyed, agricultural lands and waterways contaminated. Ukraine's government accuses Russia of what it calls ecocide and is calling on the International Criminal Court to prosecute alleged environmental crimes. We sent reporter Nick Lazaridis to Ukraine to investigate the toxic impacts of the war. A year and a half after Russia's invasion of its neighbour, many of Ukraine's precious ecosystems lie in ruin. I've come here to document the environmental impacts of all the fighting and to follow Ukrainian war crimes investigators as they collect evidence of what they describe as ecocide. These satellite images catalogue the trail of destruction in Ukraine. Some scientists claim the war in Ukraine has caused the most catastrophic ecological destruction of any single country since World War I. I think it goes to show like this is a deliberate military activity that led to what can be labelled as uh, ecocide. Ukraine has accused Russia of scorched earth tactics, tactics that have left vast tracts of forest destroyed and agricultural lands strewn with landmines. No. Uh. In the Black Sea, cetaceans are dying in large numbers, harbingers of an environmental catastrophe. One sort of the forest destroyed burned or affected by the war. In this war, we lost some parts of our nature, which we lost forever. Ukraine's environment minister is struggling to comprehend the damage. We understand that all countries will feel in future the impact of this war and the impact of this environmental damage of pollutant and other things. This is environmental crimes. Now we understand that uh, the total environmental damage for today uh, is more than 54 billion US dollars. It's uh, huge figures. So if there's deliberate attempt to have this large impact on the environment through uh, human activities, then uh, people should be held accountable for those kind of impacts. From his base in the Netherlands, researcher Wims Wijnenberg has been charting the environmental fallout of the war for the Dutch peace organisation PAX. So immediately after the invasion started in, in February, you saw like large scale strikes on industrial facilities. So Russia was trying to hit oil depots, some um, industrial uh, productive areas. I think it goes to show like the ecological catastrophe that um, those kind of actions, military actions, can have. Although they failed in their bid to capture Kyiv, Russian forces continue to pummel the city with missile and drone strikes. Ukrainians regard attacks like this as acts of terror. And teams are investigating every incident, like this missile strike on an oil depot, as a potential environmental war crime. Для мене це має значення. Для мене має значення ці розслідування. Мені важливо зробити все, що від мене залежне, щоб потім подальшому встановити всі такі винні, щоб притягнути до відповідальності, також щоб було відновлено і 
як довкілля, бо це, це, це умова, це є безумовною мовою для всього живого. In the Kyiv region alone, many hundreds of industrial complexes have been destroyed by Russian missiles. Across Ukraine, hundreds of investigations have been opened into allegations of environmental war crimes by Russian forces, including 15 cases the Ukrainians have classified as ecocide. So under Ukrainian law, Russians can be uh, prosecuted uh, for, the, for ecocide. And in this regard, I think this is helpful because uh, we see a lot of um, confiscation of Russian um, uh, assets, financial assets. So there are already estimates between two and three hundred billion um, dollars in assets which have been confiscated by the EU and the US. So uh, having that discussion can also potentially free up money uh, for Ukraine to uh, invest in remediation, reparation and cleanup of environmental damage if this is being recognized. In President Volodymyr Zelensky's hometown, the city of Kriviri, the environmental impacts of the war are being felt. І світ не готувався, і ми не готувалися до такого масштабного екологічного, скажімо, вторгнення і такого негативного впливу на наше довкілля. Ми знаходимося зараз у Кривому Розі на нафтобазі. У вересні 22-го року потрапила рашистська ракета. Значить, це вже не тверде покриття. Тоді будемо цю земельну ділянку. Да. Тут було 4 мільйони літрів пального. 4 мільйони літрів. Полум'я було шалено, вдалося його загасити, як і на інших нафтобазах. Але знову ж таки повторюся, що все ж це залишається в легенях українців. Оці всі наслідки. Олєна Криворучкіна is a member of parliament who's been personally appointed by President Zelensky to coordinate the investigation into potential environmental war crimes. Таких колосальних масштабів екологічних злочинів світ ще не бачив, незважаючи на те, що військові конфлікти вже були. Постраждала повітря, ґрунти, морські акваторії, ґрунтові води, поверхневі води. Вплив колосальний. Якщо війна обмежується територією України, то екологічні злочини не обмежуються територією України. The task of investigating allegations of ecocide falls on the State Ecological Inspectorate, Ukraine's eco-inspectors. They are painstakingly accumulating evidence using methods that they hope will be accepted by an international court. Правильне розслідування це запорука притягнення Росії до відповідальності і показати усьому світу, всім країнам, що будь-який військовий конфлікт призведе до того, що країна, яка його розв'язала, буде 100% притягнута до відповідальності. То були контрбатареї на борьба і були обстріли цього регіону з ракетних систем залпового вогню. І внаслідок цього вигоріло, як вже казав, 300 гектар лісу в цьому районі. In Ukraine's southern region of Mykolaiv, eco inspectors are trawling through what remains of one of the many local forests. It was badly damaged during battle. Так, що тут було, це були позиції російських військ. Ви можете бачити осколками посечені дерева і навіть повністю знищені вони іменно в цьому місці. Тому що це, я так розумію, був епіцентр вибуху. Навіть саме велике, що було зафіксовано кількість ракет за одну ніч, це було, наскільки я пам'ятаю, близько 60. In the waterways of Mykolaiv's port, eco-inspectors have been monitoring water quality closely. Local officials say the Russians blew up storage tanks containing sunflower oil in October 2022. 
А, ну, аварії подібні, мабуть, ну, подібні. Було більше з звичайної нафти. Це в мексиканській затоці, коли там, от, там але ж там була нафта. Е, у нас сонячника воліє, але по консистенції, по властивостям е, самої цієї речовини вони близькі, схожі. It's no surprise that the Russia-Ukraine war has taken a heavy toll on the Black Sea, especially on its larger species like dolphins and porpoises. І дуже багато дельфінів гинуло в січні 22-го року. Я дізнався, що в північно-західної частині Чорного моря було біля 15 кораблів і 10 субмарин, які чатували біля нашого парку. От Зміїн, від Зміїнного по всьому північно-західному е, узбережжі Чорного моря. Іван Русев is a well-known environmental activist in Ukraine and the head ranger at Tuzli Lagoon's National Park south of Odessa. Nick, this is the Black Sea. This big area of water. We have National Park from this side 26 km is this side the 80 kilometers. Dolphin is very important for the Black Sea, for, for the uh, ocean too. They are on uh, top of uh, uh, food pyramid. They need for these ecosystems. Now we have very few of population. So if we will lose dolphin, we will lose the ecosystem. During the first months of the war with naval battles raging not far away, Scores of dead dolphins and porpoises washed ashore, including some with signs of trauma. І були дельфіни з опіками. Вони червоні були на спині, і це було на ну не типово для дельфінів. І болгарські експерти сказали нам, що це це вплив фосфорних мін. Міни розриваються і вражають дельфіна. With many of the carcasses washing ashore in advanced stages of decomposition, it's difficult to independently verify the causes of death. But Ivan says the timing of Russian naval activity in the Black Sea, especially the use of sonar, is hard to ignore. Коли дельфін отримує сонарний удар, або дуже швидко він впливає, спливає, тоді капіляри кровеносної системи, вони розриваються від азоту. І дуже багато крові у дельфіна і через ротову полость, і через глазну систему. Soon after the start of Russia's invasion, videos emerged on social media of distressed dolphins turning up in Russian annexed Crimea. І ми бачили багато відео, особливо на Кримському узбережжі, де дельфіни живі, живі, або але вони контужені. Вони не можуть рухатися, вони не можуть шукати собі їжу, тому вони були абсолютно неактивними і через декілька днів вони помирали. Another threat to marine life, naval mines. Russia and Ukraine have blamed each other for installing mines that have broken free and drifted far into the Black Sea. Just one of the many dire consequences of war for the region. Ukraine is known as Europe's breadbasket. It's the spot that we have found the mine, TM62P3. We found it on 24th of April uh, this year. But here in the far northeast, close to the Russian border, all of the deoccupied settlements in the Kharkiv region are infested with landmines. With a combined harvester, as you can see, uh, it is quite destroyed. It detonated two mines. It's a deadly peril that has already cost 32 lives in the Kharkiv region alone since it was deoccupied by Russian troops. The Halo Trust is an international humanitarian organization that helps countries recover after armed conflicts by clearing landmines. But given the enormity of the problem in Ukraine, they are already busy at work. A very common technique of mine laying in Ukraine that we have seen so far, and they use this one to actually prevent Ukrainian forces from advancing uh, further towards their positions. 
Even using the most optimistic projections, the landmines will take decades to clear. Right across the former front lines of this war, retreating Russian forces have been accused of laying tens of thousands of mines, which have paralyzed agricultural production and claimed many lives. But here in the village of Grakova, about an hour south of Kharkiv, desperate farmers have come up with their own homegrown solutions to this massive environmental problem. Расисти зайшли 26 февраля, освободили село 10 сентября. Вот півроку вони тут стояли, хазяйнували, мінували. Residents say that by the time the Russians left Krakowa, its church was badly damaged, the school reduced to rubble, and local farms destroyed. І вся ця проблема, вона ложиться на всіх людей, на всіх українців. Ми не можемо зайти в поле, ми не можемо посіяти, ми не можемо виростити, ми не можемо розрахуватись з людьми за землю, за паї. Local farmer Alexander Krivtsun is eager to show visitors the deadly menace lying hidden in Grakova's fields. Вот вона одна пішла, вторая, третя, четверта, п'ята, шестая, седьмая, восьмая, дев'ята і так їх 20 штук. Вот она, как останавливает. Две полосы. Одна, вторая. Две дорожки. Alexander says that in one field nearby, more than 300 mines were discovered. And with the planting season upon them, village farmers collectively searched for a solution. Потому что мы выдумывали, придумывали, придумывали то, что мы придумали. Ну вот и мы придумали из разных запчастин, из разных... Туда пішли і рашистки з танка. Гракова's farmers modified their tractors into remote-controlled demining vehicles and began clearing their fields. Наш трактор уже підривався п'ять разів. Із них один раз на протипіхотній міні, чотири рази на протитанкових міні. Восстанавливаємо, робимо його і знову запускаємо. І всі ці п'ять тракторів, вони в деяких цілі до сих пор залишилися. Я знаю господарства фермерів, які вже розмінували цими тракторами і продали цей трактор. Другі, кому нужен цей трактор. Гракова is typical of hundreds of villages throughout Ukraine that have been largely destroyed and contaminated with mines and toxic debris. European scientists are already worried about the environmental ramifications of this war spreading far beyond Ukraine's borders. We think that this has to be a national plan. We can say even a, a Marshall plan for the environment. Right. This is one important thing that needs to be considered in, in, in Ukraine. In Lithuania, environmental scientist Paolo Pereira has been using satellite data and open source information to monitor the toxic fallout. It is important to understand that they are connected with each other. So what's happened in the soil, what's happened in the forests, will impact the air, will impact the sea. So the ecosystems are interconnected. You see how vegetation responds in forest areas. In for environmental scientists, building a forensic snapshot of the war's impacts is a complex task. So this is a cascade of, of elements. One, one is interdependent from the other. But if I would rank one, I think, I think now the, the pollution caused by the, by the bombs on the agricultural areas. So we're talking about soil contamination. Soil contamination might be very high. So this is a process that can take decades to, to return to, the, to previous levels. The use of another type of weapon could cause further environmental harm. Monitoring groups say Russia and Ukraine have both used cluster munitions during the war. In July of 2023, many of Ukraine's allies expressed concern at Kyiv's decision to acquire cluster munitions from the US. They are considered by many as indiscriminate weapons and banned by more than a hundred countries. 
Small, unexploded bomblets can stay on the ground for years, contaminating large areas and injuring civilians. Ukraine's government has defended their use against military targets. Ultimately, it is here at the International Criminal Court in The Hague that any alleged war crimes from this conflict will be brought to account. But to what extent environmental crimes, including ecocide, can be prosecuted is yet to be seen. The International Criminal Court, the ICC, has only limited scope to prosecute environmental war crimes under the Rome Statute, which defines its mandate. But as the magnitude of environmental destruction in Ukraine is revealed, there's a growing push from around the globe for a swift recognition regarding the legal definition of ecocide so that it can be recognised as an international crime. We put the allegations made by Ukrainian officials in this film to the Russian government for comment. We did not hear back. In the months following Russia's full-scale invasion, the city of Mykolaiv was nearly surrounded, and it bears the scars. Спочатку клали все по краям, а потім вже вони зрозуміли, що ми нічого не боїмося, і вони просто почали вже бити по центру міста, де живуть люди. Yana Mayberoda heads up Mykolaiv's eco inspectors team giving her a forensic view into the attacks on her city and its fractured environment. Yana says the environmental repercussions of the war are difficult to quantify. Ну, майже біорозманіття, забруднення ґрунтів, водних об'єктів. With the destruction of Kharkovka Dam in June 2023, another layer of complexity and misery has been added to Ukraine's environmental devastation. The destruction of Kharkovka Dam is the biggest environmental impact after Chernobyl catastrophe. And potentially, Ukraine lost 18 cubic kilometers of fresh water. Russia and Ukraine have blamed each other for the dam's destruction. The flooding that followed has had an enormous impact on a region already battered by war. Це було в воді. Цих пагорбів не було видно. Ну, рівень в цьому місці був піднятий на 6 метрів. Тобто, маєте розуміти, я і ще два рази, як я. Today there's a large team at work, including eco inspectors, war crimes prosecutors and scientists. Ще будемо брати проби ґрунта, будемо мати результати через два тижні. Ukrainian officials claim that the flooding has poisoned thousands of kilometers of farmland with devastating consequences for food production. Це може викликати продовольчий кризис в Україні. Це однозначно ударить по експортному потенціалу держави, як і по економіці держави в цілому. Вони должны вони вони мають зрозуміти, що невідворотність покарання це стосовно них, це те, що буде. As the war grinds on, the toll mounts, and with every act of destruction, scientists collect the data. 
and Ukrainians are confident that when the war ends, there will be a just reckoning for their precious natural world.